different angle. It's our international press of you, and uh, winging his way in from the wings, I can see. James Creedon joining us. Morning, Mark. Thank you, sir. Uh, where are you starting today? I'm starting with Iran and Robert Fisk, who's writing in The Independent. Uh, protests, of course, going on yesterday in Tehran, continuing, although slightly less uh, virulent than the day before. And there was a document being circulated in the crowd, which was apparently, allegedly, a letter written from the Iranian Interior Ministry to Ayatollah Khomeini uh, the day after the election. And in that letter, they give the real election results, according to this document, what were which they? 19 million for Mousavi mm -hmm. and 5.5 million for Mr. Ahmed Inajad. Wow. Now, that is the document appears to be genuine, huge according difference. huge difference. It appears to be genuine, according to Fisk, but could of course be a forgery. And Fisk himself says that it's difficult to believe that Ahmadinejad, who is so popular with the poor in particular, well, would get such a, a low score. Fisk has sorry to interrupt you, James. Fisk yeah. has a very, very strong journalistic reputation. Yeah. So if he's going along with that. He's, he's, he, has some, he has some hesitations. He said it appears genuine, but it could be a fraud. I mean, it, as all, he said that in a, a society as sophisticated as the Iranian one, they, there, it would, there would be no difficulty in producing a very convincing forgery. So that is to be read in any case in The Independent. It's also in uh, Liberation in France. But it's a very tangled web of intrigue, isn't it? It is, and we, I suppose we don't really know what the truth is, but there's a lot of uh, different whisperings coming out. OK, so more gatherings are predicted for today. So tomorrow's papers, I imagine, will be packed of it again. Yes, exactly. Carry on. The Wall Street Journal has an article headlined Some Israelis Prize Ahmadinejad's Role. And this is a report on the head That's of... That's an interesting mm, twist. It is. The head of Mossad apparently views Ahmadinejad as a sort of somebody who suits their uh, desire, I suppose, to enlist international support against the Iranian nuclear plan because, of course, he's a Holocaust-denying rabble-rouser, as the Wall Street Journal says. So a Musavi victory would have presented Israel with a graver problem, interestingly, from a cynical point of rabble view. Rabble-rouser is a very unfortunate way to put it because it has a sort of comic kind of undertone which doesn't really suit the story so it's a bad choice of work by them I'd say yes. but certainly um, I suppose from what Mossad is saying is that if you know exactly what someone stands for yeah. it's very easy then to In to take your position against that, exactly. what saying, isn't it, I suppose? Exactly, and because he's such a hardliner, it suits them in, in the sense that they want to um, paint, Certainly I suppose, without, the Iranian without, regime without as being hardliner. What you see appears to be what you get, so exactly. there you go, no confusion. Now, now then, football, which is one of my favourite subjects. Yes, on the front of the Financial the Times of, of all FT, places. Look at that. And that's because the Iranian team who played South Korea yesterday were wearing green armbands. Now, the result of that match was one all, which meant that Iran will not qualify for the World Cup. What but do the green armbands mean, then? It, the green armband is in support of Mousavi. Now, they disappeared in the second half of the match, and there's the speculation as to why they disappeared. They think that there might have been a phone call from Tehran saying, get rid of those armbands. Is it just um, like, are they just sweatbands? Is it, is it a coincidence, or are they actual sort of supporter well, uh, things? quite a few of them were wearing uh, these armbands, so it seems to have been a nod to Mousavi supporters. OK, that's an interpretation. Now, Let's go with it. Uh, moving to the Times of London, where they're talking about North Korea also having qualified for the World Cup. Now, you realise this is actually uh, a good omen, don't you? Yeah. Do you Why know is this? it a good omen? North Korea qualifying for the World Cup for the first time since 1966. Yes, I was going to get to that. Who won the World Cup, it was It was your fair country, England, I believe. England, England yes. won the World Cup, so maybe South Africa next year? <laughs> who knows? Do you have a little bet, now, James? Do you know who they beat in that 1966 World Cup? They uh, knocked out Italy. That's right. Oh, and no. Italy got pelted with eggs it, and it tomatoes. It was a scandal in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> amazing stuff. Amazing they got pelted stuff. with eggs and tomatoes when they got if back to Rome. If you're watching and you're Italian, I really like Italian football. It's just that it's funny if, if a big team gets beat by a small team, isn't it? Right. And they weren't expected to do well uh, as well as they did at all. They got to the nope. final eight that year. Yeah. Now, very quickly in the Irish Times... Well, course, the other thing you missed yes. out, sorry, sorry to stop you, yeah. South Korea already qualified as well. Imagine, if, right. imagine if they met. Yes, from that the same group. That would be that interesting. The two massive foes. That would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Now, uh, the, uh, the fact that the EU leaders are meeting today in Brussels to discuss a protocol to the Lisbon Treaty, that's getting covered in the Irish Times. But what I would like to talk about is what's in the Irish Independent, the 10 most ridiculous lawsuits of all time. Now, there's some great examples. 79-year-old Stella, who took a case against McDonald's because she spilled coffee on her lap. Everyone was laughing until she won $3 million. Well, that was in 1992. The temperature of McDonald's coffee at the time was something like 90 degrees. So it, you know, there was an issue there right. that the coffee was too hot. There right. were a number of cases about that. What's next? Interesting. Well, there was also the Playboy pensioner who sued a 19-year-old for not sleeping with him. That'll she do. She told, she told him he was too old let's and he sued for ageism. Let's end, on, let's end on that one because I don't think you can get much better than that. And I'm worried about what I was going to say next. James Creedon there with the International <laughs> Press of you. Thank you, James. I hope you've still got jobs after this one. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks. OK, let's uh, catch up now with the main news headlines.